everybody. Oh, I have to take the headphones off. I forgot. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. I can't wear the headphones because it gives me an echo. Like, not an echo. Well, maybe an echo or a delay or something. But uh, it kind of messes me up. So, like I said, I'm going to just wear it during uh, during phone calls. Anyway, good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, Let's Talk Depression, episode two. Yes, yesterday. Last week, we had our uh, our first show, episode one, with a call from Marty. Really nice guy. Um, I'd like to promote his podcast, uh, Black and White pa- Podcast. Um, you could find him on my page, I think. I don't know how this works. Like I said, I don't browse. Um, Podbean, so um, I only use it basically at midnight. Um, I haven't gone through the whole thing because I have so much going on, and you know, um, it's hard to uh, it's hard to uh, capture up new things. I have so much going on that you know the podcast just adds another one, but it, you know, it makes me feel good after. Uh, Talking to Marty last week, uh, it was uh, it was a feel good moment. Um, anyway, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody had a great week. Um, like I said, uh, I created this podcast so we can talk depression, and I'll continue with my story, and uh, we'll see if anybody wants to pop in. Anyway, we last left off with uh, me leaving the uh, psychiatrist's office in tears because all they want to do is medicate me. They don't want to help me. They don't want to actually listen to me. Um, so I figure we do this and uh, at least somebody will listen to me. So, uh, yeah, so I came home after that, uh, that night and, uh, you know, we worked things out. My wife is one of those, uh, man, she's like, like a godsend to me. I'm not a uh, believer, but if that is the term, that's what she is. Um, she basically saved my life. We've been together 24 years, and uh, I was one of those, uh, how to put it lightly, a man hoe back in my day, and uh, it was very hard for me to, to commit with one person because that's all I was doing, basically. I was just, you know, going around doing my thing. After 12 years of, uh, (coughs) (coughs) excuse me, (coughs) that one kind of hit hard, got my coffee, excuse me, so anyway, um, yeah, after, uh, 12 years and we had, uh, my son, um, she basically put her foot down and, uh, and said, uh, that we were going to get, uh, that she wanted to get married. I didn't want to get married because I know a lot of people that are married and then uh, all they do is get divorced. I'm not all into all that. You know, I'm one of those guys that, uh, believe uh i mean don't take this the wrong way anybody and i understand plus trust me i went through this with a lot of people you know sometimes you have uh no choice but to leave and of course you do you have a lot of choices to talk things out and try to work things to make yourself happy a lot of people give up too easily if my wife would have gave up on me that easily um 
I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. You wouldn't even know who I am. Um, so we get up one Sunday morning. And uh, she tells me that uh, we had an open relationship. I don't know if I mentioned that. We had an open relationship for 12 years. Basically, I was screwing everybody and she was being a good girl. You know, but it got to a point that she wound up having a boyfriend. And we were cool, you know. And then one day, we get up on a Sunday morning. And then uh, she tells me, we need to talk. You know, when a woman says we need to talk, you know, it's important. So uh, I said, okay, what's up? She's like, oh, I'm going to move in. What's his name? I was like, that dude you're going on with? She's like, yeah. I was like, uh, okay. Um, and I told, oh, we had our daughter too. That's right. We had a son and our daughter. And uh, my daughter was an infant. She was a baby. Um, and I said to her, I said, well, uh, me and the kids are going to miss you, you know, when you go. And then she's like, I'm taking the kids. I was like, you ain't taking my kids. I was like, there's no way nobody's taking my kids. Um, I got used to the idea of having kids, being home with my kids. There's no way I'm going to, especially my little girl. I don't know this guy from Adam. They had a two-bedroom apartment with a roommate. I was like, there is no way I'm going to let you move into a one-bedroom with uh, your boyfriend and my two kids. I said, do you want to go? Go ahead. But the kids are staying here. So we had this big discussion. So and I was like, all right, how can we make this better? So basically, she was, um, she said she wanted to get married. It's been 12 years already, which she's right. I mean, back in those days, I had my mindset, my mindset was, you know, way different than it is now. So, uh, like I said, I didn't want to get married because all my friends were, they were married or divorced and miserable and got to pay all this money and it's not even worth it. And uh, I said, well, I need to think about it. So I went to my buddy, my buddy's house and uh, I'm not going to mention any names or towns, but um, over on his side of town, and I stayed there for four days. And basically, I had my own bachelor party, I guess, if you want to call it. Um, and I came home after four days of partying and doing whatever I needed to do. And uh, the way I, uh, the way I proposed, it wasn't the right way to do it. But it was effective enough that it's understandable. No matter what goes, ha what happens in, in, in our future life, we need to fix it. Divorce is not in the option. It always never has been in my head. So when I got home, I told her, you want to get married, we'll get married. But... That I'm like the mafia. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm like the mafia. Once you're in, there's only one way out. Do you still want to marry me? <laughs> That's my proposal. I I kid you not. And uh, she said yes. So uh, I said, all right. Then we had our own wedding. On 10, 10, 10. The reason she wanted to go 10, 10, 10 is so that way I don't forget. Because <laughs> I forget everything. I didn't even remember her birthday for years. Because I don't remember people's birthdays. 
you have to understand my head in my head everything's all about me you know what i mean and it's a very narcissistic thing that i have like you'll have a conversation and i'll say uh, about you and then i'll be like well i did this you know what i mean it always got turns around turn around to be me yes i'm very egotistical and narcissistic and self-centered and it's all about me because it's always been all about me you have to understand man i was like what a nerd in high school i mean you i'll tell you my whole story i didn't even start with telling my story yet i'm just filling you in who i am you know when i was a kid never had a girlfriend um through my whole school career you know um all through Grand, well, grand, well, pu public school, I guess. I guess it, I don't know. I went to school in New York, PS eighty nine and PS one hundred two. They're they're in uh, in Queens, New York. But I don't know what they call it up there, grammar school or whatever. But I know it's just a public school. But ever since a kid, you know, I always liked girls, but. You know, they never liked me. I was always quiet, nerdy. And uh, just never really able to talk to anybody. I mean, especially women. Guy friends, I mean, I had your normal one or two buddies. But other than that, you know, never. I mean, even in high school, man, I was like, I mean... There was a lot of nice people there. I was in love with all the girls, man. I could name all the girls I used to be like. I had crushes on in high school. There was so many of them. And we're all friends in, on Facebook, you know. And they we reconnected with Facebook. All my friends from high school in my little hometown of uh, Carteret, New Jersey. Um that I could say because that's my own personal life and uh, it's a very small town it's a uh, three by three square mile you'll probably hear this again in the future I'm just saying it now but anyway I repeat a lot of things it's like about a three by three square mile town and back in the 80s when I got there I got there when I was in ninth grade ninth grade ninth grade yeah and uh, my brothers and sisters went to uh, grammar school. My oldest sister was already in high school. She was with me. And uh, the town was it's such a, you don't realize where you come from till it's not there anymore. Carter, New Jersey, back in the 80s, used to be like, and if, if, if you guys ever see uh, the Andy Griffith show, it's like Mayberry, you know? I never been to any town that everybody knows each other, you know? Everybody, I mean, you just walk down the street and just wave to people that you know everybody, you know? It's such a small town that we just knew everybody. You know, you left the doors unlocked. Um. Your friends come in and out, you know, without, you know, it's just, it, it was just that kind of com uh, community town, small. And of course, uh, 20, 30 minutes away, you had New York City, which, you know, you could have that lifestyle and still have that small town feeling. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of great times, a lot of great memories. Even like I said, even though I wasn't really that popular, um, I'd still do it again. I threw it everything, everything all over again, exactly the way it worked. Because exactly the way my life went, it's exactly the way it should have worked out, for the exception of the heart attack, of course. But I always tell people, I'm like, yeah. Do I have any regrets? I don't have none whatsoever. Because the way I feel, if I would have had at least one regret, um, 
it would have changed the course of my life. Like if I didn't have that one night stand with my oldest daughter's mother, I wouldn't have my daughter. And then I wouldn't have moved down here because my daughter moved down here. That's the reason I came down here. I told other people it's because I was partying too much. I was partying too much, but the main reason was because my daughter moved down here. Me, I would never move down to Florida. If I was going to move somewhere out of, out of New Jersey, it probably would have been California. And then I would have partied with rock stars over there. That's why I said I would have been dead. I would have been dead with, you know, a handful of Coke and four strippers in my hotel room. And I would have been dead like a rock star, basically. That's why I always say my wife saved my life. Now, has it been perfect with me and my wife? The 24 years? Nah. You know, she's been perfect. She's done everything right. You know, she's raised our kids. She got to work and still she worked hard and she still was the soccer mom like I said some of you you're probably going to hate me for saying stuff but it's it's me it's not you okay I know some of you don't have that time to be a soccer mom soccer dad you know and I understand that. That's not what I'm getting at. It's not like I'm saying my life is better than yours. You know, I'm just comparing. I'm not comparing. I'm just letting you know what my life was like. Doesn't necessarily reflect on other people. The way I see it, your reflection on who you are is uh, what your kids come out. You know what I mean? If you did good with your kids, then there shouldn't be you're, you. You just you did good because once you go, your kids are gonna be here, and they're gonna be the ones that are gonna, you know, run the rest of the world. And and if you raise decent human beings. This world be a lot better. I know we're going through a lot of crap right now with everything, and it's it's very exhausting. The election years are very exhausting because they just try to throw everything down your throat. You know, both sides. I'm not picking a side or anything. I'm not the. I don't like the way things are going. Like I said, I don't want to get political on this thing, so I'm gonna stay away from that. But we're 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 living in some. Might get some rougher times. We don't know. I don't know. I'm a I'm a president supporter, so I support whatever happens until they screw up four years later, and then I talk shit about you. But um, yeah, we can. A lot of people this past year have gone through a lot of stuff. You know, unemployment, um, no money to come. You know, pay your bills. Um, government telling you that they're going to send you money and then by the time they send you money you're either it's too late or you're homeless already because everybody just doesn't move fast enough and uh, it is depressing man especially if you're a guy you know if you're a guy and you're supporting your family and then something like this happens, or like I had my my heart attack, and then you just don't feel like a man anymore. It's like that manhood just went away. And um, and that's when the depression comes in, man. Hold on a second. All right, I had to get a bud. It's in the other side of the room. 
I got too much crap. If you see my studio, you'll be like, holy crap. So, like I said, uh, I understand some some guys going through some stuff, you know. Because if you can't support your family, man, it just takes a big hit on your ego. And, and it does, you know. But marriage is not for everybody. Kids aren't for anybody, for everybody. You know, I meet a lot of women that don't like kids. And, you know, those are the kind of people that shouldn't have kids because if, if you don't like kids, you shouldn't raise them. Me, I didn't, I loved kids all the time, but, you know, I never knew how to raise kids till I raised mine. And I tell you what, it's very nice raising kids. Very nice. It's, uh, time goes by very quickly. Oh, you know what I forgot? Man, I forgot to do my push-ups. This is the things I remember. I just looked at the date. I, uh, I'm doing this 25 push-up challenge for, uh, fighting cancer. And I have to do it every day. And I should just do it, like, right after this. Got about eight minutes. Left. I'll stay here for a half hour. Got about eight minutes left. And because I don't want to drag it because I got a lot to say and it's going to, we're going to be by episode 1,335. <laughs> by the time I even get halfway to my stories, probably. Because uh, everything so takes so damn long. So I'm basically here helping myself. As I'm helping myself, I'm I'm helping you. If you're listening, like like Marty last week, you know, he did a great job, great storyteller. You know, told him I said, you know, whenever you want, you, you can call me. You know, just because I talked to you once doesn't mean I can I don't have to talk to you again. You know, I like having conversations with people. My kids hated it when uh, we go out to anywhere, store, grocery store, whether it be anywhere, Walmart, anywhere. And then we're standing in line. I could sit there and talk to people, total strangers. And then, then two minutes that I'm standing in line, I, I know everything about you. Married kids, your age, what job you have, everything. It's <clears throat> would you say a gift? I guess it's a gift. A gift of gab. Um, but my kids hate it. Just, Do you have to talk to everybody? I'm like, what? Well, I'm standing in line, bored. What am I gonna do? Look at the magazines and see what Kim Kardashian is doing this week? <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm a, I'm a conversationalist. I can, I can sit there and start, but I have to be the domineering in the conversation. Um, I'm not, uh, one of those guys that, uh, I just can sit there and take your conversation. Like I said, the, the, the narcissistic part of me, that's what takes over. I don't even want to have my glasses here. Ugh. The worst thing. I see somebody typed in, but I can't see. Hold on. Uh, Into the live studio. Oh, okay. Welcome. Welcome to my show. From Idaho. I guess is that is that Lily? I don't. I'm sorry. I can't see your name because um, I don't have my glasses. It's, I think I left them in my bedroom. I had to take a nap before I started this. Um, oh, it's Jill. Okay, thanks. It's Jill. Hi, Jill. Good morning. How are you? 
Um, thank you for listening. Did you just get on or? Uh... Oh, okay. So you're like almost at the uh, almost at the end of my podcast because I was gonna usually I I do a, I want to do about fifteen twenty uh, fifteen half hour maybe, but uh, usually when uh, if people like uh, contact you know contact me and want to talk I stay on longer. Last week I stayed on with Marty for what an hour, over an hour. That guy was great. He he has uh he has some issues with him, but um he was a great storyteller. And if you uh if you listen to episode one, you'll see it. You'll hear it actually, because there's no video. Um he had something going in the background. It sounded like uh, chainsaws or something, or like mowing a lawn or something. I don't know if he was watching a movie, but you'll you'll hear it you'll hear the the well yeah i'm on i'm on usually um well i'm on every wednesday at midnight that's what time i come on so um i'll stay on if you want me to i mean you, you want to talk or do you uh suffer from depression is that why you up this early in the morning I don't know if she's still there, but oh, another message. Yeah, I should really start taking my uh, bringing my glasses in. And it's ten twenty-seven. Let me actually. Oh. You lost your husband the night before Thanksgiving. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Well, you can call me. I'll stay on. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, um, you know, I'm retired. I'm, I was just going to go to bed because I don't want to, I, I don't want to tell my whole, all, like, spend hours telling you my story. You know, it, it wouldn't be that many episodes. You know, I just like to tell everybody, but cry all the time. Yeah, I bet. The day before, wait, was it the day? The day before Thanksgiving. But if you, like I said, if you want to call in, you can, you know, you could do it through the, through this, or uh, you could call me through my Google voice, which is 407-900-7952. Next time. Okay. That's okay, sweetie. Anytime. Like I said, my I'm here all the time. Um, well, not all the time. I'm here every Wednesday. I don't have a headset. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're going to need that because if not, you're going to echo a little bit. But uh, yeah, just get uh, a nice, not a nice pair of headphones, any kind of regular headphones work. I mean, you can go to the dollar store and get those. Um, I've done that before, trust me. So next Wednesday, yes, yes, sweetie, next Wednesday. Where are you? I'm in Orlando, Florida, which is uh, 12.30 right now. And you're in Idaho, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you, honey, you just go to one of those, like I said, dollar stores and get those cheap mics. You don't need anything expensive because all you have to do is plug in. The reason is for that is for the Echo. If you don't, uh, if you try to do that with your with your uh, laptop or your phone, you, you get a lot of echo. Boise, huh? I guess you guys are cold up there, huh? Yeah, I bet. I'm originally from Jersey, so I know about the snow and the coldness. And I used to hang out in New York City back in the 80s and 90s. So, but the... The snow is not that bad because you could actually, well, people in Florida know this, but people up north already know this. Um, when it's snowing, you can actually wear a T-shirt outside because it's not really that cold. Um, but when it melts, <laughs> that's when it's a bitch. 
I want to go to New York so bad. You know, when you go to New York, I mean, New York is good for two things. One is good for people watching. <laughs> and two is it's just an amazing city. I mean, regardless of what, what's going on over there, that has not, no reflection on uh, on what New York really is. But if you're into old stuff and, you know, looking at old buildings and, you know, it's great. Um, I'm a people watcher. Uh, some people may find that weird, but no, I'm not one of those, you know, one of those weird people. I just, I love watch, looking at people and just seeing what, what their life is like, you know, like I'll go to the grocery store and I'll look behind me and I'll see what people have in their cart, what people have in their cart would basically explain to me their life you know what i mean before i start talking to them you know it's like i already know you before i even start talking to you but uh yeah i went to uh back to new york or new jersey um god i don't even remember how long ago it was four three four years ago um uh, one of my best friends we were three you know, close back in the day. And uh, he was younger than me and he died of a heart attack. So uh, I went up to, uh, for the funeral. And uh, my aunt lives, like I said earlier, I'm from Queens, New York. And my aunt lives in Queens. And uh, to get to Queen, to get to her house, especially in the part where she lives, it's kind of hard to do mass transit because... There's some parts of Queens that is like so out there that there's no really, it's like living in Florida, no way to get there. And uh, she wanted me to, uh, you know, she wanted to see me. So I went to New York and I went outside uh, Penn Station. And I'm just standing there in the corner, right by Saburros. Um, That's a pizza place. Um, and they were doing some kind of work on the street. So they had these barricades up. And the barricades were so, like, perfect, like, to sit on. You know, I had my pizza. You know, I came out. Because, man, I waited, like, almost, like, two hours for my aunt to come get me. Because, you know, like, traffic in New York is, like, crazy. So, yeah, I sat there for at least two hours just looking at people. And there were so many people, man. I was like, wow. And the different cultures and everything. It's so beautiful. Like, you know, like seeing all the different things that or different people from around the world, you know, around the country. And uh, you just look at them. And there's so many. You say you look at one and it's like, okay, what does he do? La, 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 la. Okay, there's another one. Okay, what does she do? Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but those two hours, man, I had my headphones on. Those two hours just went by very quick. And then, yeah, my aunt picked me up and took another hour and a half to get back to her house. I lived here all my life. And I think... Well, you know what? Uh, the big city is not all it's cracked out to be. Um, um, me, I prefer a nice little, nice little hometown like my old hometown in New Jersey. I like, uh, I like the closeness. Florida is a weird state. In Florida, you can live in an apartment for years and not know your next door neighbor. I swear to you. That's how private people are here. Everybody says, oh, it's so always nice down here. No, it's not always nice down here. I've been down here for 25 years now. It's freaking hot. <laughs> 
people don't walk in the street here in, the, in July and August. The worst, the worst time of the year in Florida. July and August is just miserable. You walk as soon as you walk outside, you're sweating. Yes, we don't have the snow. This and that. We don't. You know, it gets cold every. This is the actually the first time in Florida it's been cold this long. And cold uh, by me saying cold by me waking up and it's fifty five degrees, you know that's cold here. You know I know you guys are going like below zero. The humidity is the worst. My God, especially if you have long hair. I have long hair. Um, actually, that on the on my logo, that's actually me. But I have long hair, and uh, you walk out there, and it's just your hair's nasty. Nasty, nasty, nasty. But like I said, in in the summertime, nobody nobody walks, you know. But if you're a beach person, you know, you can go to the beach all the time. Oh, there's no pic. I thought it was a logo on my thing, on my channel. I don't know how this this podcast thing, uh, I mean the the Podbean thing works. I mean, all I know is how to do is just press, you know, start, um, and just start talking. That's what I like about it. Um, my wife and I had uh we had a uh, internet talk show for a couple of years in and in and out, and uh, I set it up with the camera and to try to set everything up with the camera and 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 the mics and everything. And if you don't have a fast computer, it kind of screws up. And it was hell doing it. And it was I was by my doing it basically myself. I was the host. And I was the producer, so I had to make sure the kid, everybody saw what's going on, and there was no lagging, and oh, it was just a nightmare. If you if you look at my channel on uh, on YouTube, which is TVBN TV, um, TVBN Space TV, actually, uh, they uh, you'll see some of them here. Let me see if I can type in my YouTube channel TVBN. Oops. And see, so I'm trying to I think I put it up there. L O L T V B N T V. Yeah, there it is. Um yeah, so if you could if you just Google that, but just you have to Google it with the TV with the space on it. Because if you do it all together, it takes you to some Chinese network. But if you do it like with a space, it'll take you right to my channel. Then you'll see the first episode. You'll also see my cooking show, which is Rocking the Kitchen with Oscar G. Me and my wife do a uh, a cooking show. Um, we used to do it every Sunday, but you know a lot of stuff goes on, and then you know you do it and you don't do it. The thing that the 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 success of any podcast or any YouTube channel. Um, is you have to be consistent and it's very hard to be consistent, you know, especially if you're starting out, you know, I've been doing, um, basically internet, I called it internet radio. This is before podcasting because we're going back, man, if you look at the channel, we're going back eight, eight years ago, there was no podcasting. But we were, I was just, I put myself on on there and we just talk about anything. We had a good time. We had some some, some laughs. You know, me, I get aggravated because if it doesn't work out, it's like, oh, God. And then I just end the show and be done with it. But yeah, we had a good time. Are we going to do it again? I don't know if we're going to do it again. Um, I like to. She is pretty funny. I'll probably do it on on Podbean because when you do stuff with no with no video, oh my God, it makes it so much easier because you, your computer don't run that, don't run that hard. So I'm not even recording this video for myself. I just screw it. I'll just leave it on, on, uh, on audio. But yeah, this Podbean, uh, it's pretty easy software to, to, to work. I love it that you just press play and it's you're there, you know, not like it's not complicated, but I'll, I'll get, I'll get more into this and try to see. All right. Let's see what you wrote. I'm in a gal. If you 
months ago and now it's hard to be really subscribing to it so I guess I don't need it. Oh my God, really? He killed himself in April? That sucks, man. I mean, I mean, I've been there. Okay, peace. Okay, it's on YouTube. Oh, wow. I mean, I've been there and came close, but too much of a coward to do anything for myself. And um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for your husband, too. I mean, you know, I hope you come on next week and, you know, I'll get you on there and then we'll have some time and we can chat. Because, um, you know, I know how. I'm a, like I said, I don't know how, how much you know about me, but I'm a survivor of a massive heart attack. So basically I was supposed to be dead. And um, I think about that a lot, especially when, when you have kids and, and, and you, and you start thinking like, what are they going to do by, by themselves? Like when I was still working before I, I became, before they put disability on me, we had five yeah mine um, did would your husband die of if you don't mind me asking was it of a heart attack oh he died of covid okay i'm sorry heart failure yeah i know ah that's rough See the thing is, I'm I'm one of the lucky ones that made it. I had a massive heart attack with a hundred percent blockage on the left side of my heart. I went to the uh, hospital, um, not knowing. I thought it was heartburn. The nurses hooked up the EKG on me, and they were like, "Whoa!" And I'm like, "What?" <laughs> They're like, you know, you have a massive heart attack right now, sir. I said, I had no clue. Well, it's the transplants. No, I'm not because um, my heart right now is at 29%. On Friday, I get to see uh, how, uh, if my bad is, my heart is getting any worse or not. If it's getting any worse, yes, there is talk about that. But right now there isn't. I mean, 29% they put a uh, defibrillator on me really he was at 11 oh. wow but um, yeah they 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 can actually tell how many heart you, you know you could have a heart attack not even know it I've had four minor ones. I mean, four minor ones, one massive one. And they could tell by... Uh... Yeah, that's what mine is. Is a defibrillator pacemaker. Yeah, that's what I got. Um, the funny story about my defibrillator is... Uh, when the doctor first told me that I, I was going to get one... He goes, oh, it'll just be a little incision, and I'll stick it in, blah, blah, blah. And, and uh, I learned. Yeah, well, maybe we could talk a lot next week. <laughs> because I've learned a few things myself about all that stuff. Um, does your legs swallow a lot? No, they don't. I'm very fortunate that I don't have any of that going on. I'm on like 15 different medications. And um, they finally got it right because I spent like 15 times in the emergency room last year because I couldn't get my medication right. Finally, they got they got it all good and hooked up and, you know, now I'm easy peasy. You know, I'm trying to uh, exercise. Um, I do. Uh, 
I do uh, my bike riding. Um, I do my my push ups. I'm doing a 25 push up challenge for uh, fighting cancer. Um, I figure while I'm I was still alive, I uh, I stop smoking. I smoke pot. That's what I do. I have to. It keeps me uh, keeps me going. I used to be a, a cigarette smoker, but I I quit smoking cigarettes. If you hear me taking a hit of something that hit on my pipe, <laughs> but um, yeah, that keeps me sane. That's the thing, you know. You have to, yeah. I bet. I bet he was a great guy, and I'm sorry, man. I, you know, like I was gonna say before when the thought about my kids and wife being by themselves um just kind of like ugh, you know not so much me it's them you know because i feel like they need me so oh really i want to try i want to learn how to grow myself because it's it'll be, I think it'll be so much easier. Yeah, it's it's hard. It's and and the worst thing about it is you probably did everything that you could. She has over there. <laughs> um, and I know you probably tried everything that you could. Um, you know, to to try to be there for him, you know, but sometimes man, it's it's depression. Just you feel like, even though I've been with my wife for twenty four years, when you when you get that depressed, it's just you feel like nobody can help you. He was a grouch, yeah. You know what? Me and your husband, God, <laughs> we're a lot alike. Yeah, well, I'm tend to be one of those two, uh, an asshole. Yeah, that's that's what happens, though. You know, that's you turn into an asshole. Me to the nurses, yeah, yeah. Because the thing is, it's like you go so so much in your head that you you just you don't know, you know. It's a choice. Is it a choice to be depressed? Not necessarily. You know, um, because I've never been depressed. I was never. I wrote on his window. I wrote on his window in the hospital. Yeah. Um, what you write on the window? That it was a choice? Oh, to be a crouch is a choice. Well, yes and no. I mean, it because the thing is, like, when you're when you're that depressed and you can and you feel like you, nobody can help you, it's like you get so angry. You know, I'm an angry. I'm an, I'm not an angry person. I'm a happy person. I'm always happy. I wake up happy, happy, laughing, whatever. Good morning. You know, one of those kind of guys. But when my depression hits, man. I could be such an asshole because it's just, and my wife can't take it, you know. My wife would just tell me, go, go smoke. Um, but, you know, then that's what I do. I smoke and I feel better. Um, my dep Is my depression as bad as most people? No. Have I tried uh, suicide? Uh, I, try I thought about it and didn't really go through with it. Um, but my depression comes in and out. Like I'm, I'm a very creative person. I have a band. I have, uh, I just did a movie. It's called December 25th. It's, uh, if you, well, like I said, when you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see all my stuff there. So my movie is December 25th and then you'll see my cooking shows. I got to load up a couple more cooking shows. I haven't done it. Been too busy doing other things. 
um, in him and his pages are going to cause other problems. Like I say, sex life? <laughs> Don't even talk to me about that. <laughs> uh, what was it? Not last year. It was 19, uh, 19, not 19, 2018. Me and my wife had sex once that whole year. Um, at the end of the year, she wanted to have sex, and I said no. And she says, why? I says, because we only had sex one year, and I want to end this year telling people that in 2018, I only had sex with my wife once. <laughs> so I know how it is. Um, sometimes when, when you're a guy, you know, and especially if you are, oh, did it? Yeah. Um, see, the thing is with, with me and my wife, we've been together so long that sex is probably one of the last things in, in, uh, in our life, you know, um, no blood flow. Yeah. Minus, minus the medication, to be honest with you, minus is, is, is my medication. My medication has side effects. Some of the side effects is massive headaches, which I get every day. And, uh, and uh, some of the side effects is sexual performance. You know, sometimes we get there down and dirty and, you know, my guy don't, uh, <laughs> don't want to wake up. <laughs> a lot of guys wouldn't admit that, but I do. I even put it on my Facebook. I was going to a research place. Can you take, no, I can't take anything. I already talked to my, uh, to my uh, gynecologist, Jesus, <laughs> to my cardiologist. Um, and uh, she said, no, I, I, unfortunately I can't because of my condition of my heart. Um, I said, all right, you know, this, I mean, does it bother me? It, it, I mean, it does. Oh, is that for me, the heart? Oh, I don't know what that. <laughs> to be honest with you, I don't know what kind of medication I take. I don't know. I thought that what you said it was uh, like a like a Viagra or something. Um, no, I I know I take blood thinners and and all this heart medication, but I I have no idea what any of the name is or nothing. My wife does all that for me. She puts it all in. I have we I have this big pill box with a month full of things and. She fills it up every month and I just take my pills. I have, she comes with me to the doctor when they, you know, in places. And when, when they ask me what's my medication, she has to fill that out because I have no idea. I, I barely, I'm barely dumb enough to take my, my medication every day. Sometimes I, you know, I forget because I'll get up and come into the studio and then all of a sudden it's like, I get lost. And then uh, it'd be like seven o'clock. I'll be like, damn, I forgot to take my medication. Um, I'm, I wasn't never really into the, the herbal life kind of thing, or, you know, I'm a, I'm just an old fashioned eater. You know, I love my meat. I love my, 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 my medium rare steak, you know, um, I'm going to sex or sorry for the no, it's okay. I, I just the the reason I don't like to communicate like this is because some, sometimes I don't get what you're saying and then I, I go a different direction. So it, it would be better that, you know, when if you could, you know, call me on next week and we can talk. I feel like, you know, me and me and your husband, me and my wife and you and your husband are kind of the same in the same genre. In the same, you know, um, boat, basically. Um, and I think we can connect a lot. And then hopefully I can help you. Um, 
you know, maybe just talk, because uh, it all talking helps. I mean, I'm do. I, this is my second, uh, my second podcast on on my depression, and it actually makes me feel a little better, you know. And it makes me feel a little better that that I have other people that I can talk to, and uh, um, and going through the same thing. Because when you're going through depression, you think you're the only one. That's the thing. You don't. You don't think that everybody else has it. That's why you can never, you, nobody can understand. I, I can see something is off. Oh my goodness. Sorry, um, if you're listening to me on YouTube, I'm reading. <laughs> I'm trying to read. <laughs> That's why I can't. I can't, uh, I can't read and talk at the same time. Uh, cardiac patients. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like I said, have I changed my diet? Yeah, I changed. I, I, I got a, taken a lot out of my, my diet to, to be better. Last time I went and did blood work, it was like, two months ago and my blood work came out really good um i'm sorry i was thinking this was all about me no 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 you're good you're good the problem i left you know it's i'm lazy i did need to get up and get my glasses um you know, back and forth, but you know, like uh, this show, this, this, these, uh, these, um, these podcasts are also going on my, uh, on my YouTube channel. So, um, you know, they don't, they don't, they're not looking at the, at the text messages that you're writing me, and I don't want to misread them because I can barely see them, and I can see every other word. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. Uh, my, you know, the older you get, you know, you, I get these cheaters. Um, they're, uh, they're like, I get them at the dollar store and I keep losing them. I keep like leaving stuff everywhere because I, I'm not, I never wore glasses. So, you know, I'm never really used to them. I still got to get, try to get used to them. And I forget to pick them up and I forget a lot. Once you get old, I'm 53 now. My wife's birthday Saturday. Ooh, I did one of these bad things. Like I know my wife's birthday is to you know January sixteenth. I already know that, and we already talked about it. But I have my uh, my grandson. If I do one of these bad things, I'm going to be fifty in March. My husband is fifty eight. You gonna be fifty in March? Welcome to the club. <clears throat> wow, 58 is very young. It's a shame. Um, so uh, we're sitting there, and my grandson. Um, I have my grandson. is uh, He's 12 years old, and he could throw a perfectly good spiral. Nobody's taught him, but he's just gifted with that. So I'm kind of pushing him to uh, to do football. And we had some tryouts last week, and he did really good. And uh, um, I'm supposed to go to uh, to my daughter's house to drop off his, uh, his his Christmas present that just finally came in. And uh, my wife is like, "So, what are your plans this weekend?" She said, "Well, I'm like, well, I have band, and then I have to go to this lady's house and do that, and I was going to go to." you know, the grandson and this and that. And I totally, totally forgot, not forgot that it was her birthday, but I forgot what day it was. I thought we were still in the beginning of the week for some reason. I don't know. Like I said, when you're retired, you kind of lose track of time. And she, she got really upset with me because I forgot that Saturday was a birthday. <laughs> I'm like, Oh shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. 
<laughs> so much you little over a year. Yeah, I was I was kind of in the doghouse for a minute. Um, but I told I said, look, I got so much going on and I didn't forget that it's your birthday and it's just didn't do them. So but I canceled the the grant going pick doing the grandson thing and uh we're gonna go do something. Don't know what, but I'm going to do some. I mess with her because I'm 53 and she is turning 43, I think. Yeah, she was born in 79. And um, I call her old. <laughs> well, you actually, you're getting on your years, honey. <laughs> but me and my wife, we laugh. We laugh a lot. We we pick on each other. Um, it... Uh, it makes life easier when you laugh and to find somebody like that. It's very hard, you know, but we do, we, we laugh, we, we could, we're the type of couple, like it wouldn't matter if we just laid in bed all day and just watched TV and ate stuff <laughs> ordered out. You know what I mean? We're not the type of, you know, we always have to do something. Um, we do, uh, our, uh, we do, we go to garage sales every Saturday morning. Um, that's our, our thing. And we, uh, oh, I'm a homebody too. Trust me. No, seriously. That's the first thing. Laugh all the time and joke around. Yeah, laughing all the time, joking is funny. Um, but yeah, so uh, when you see the uh, when you when you go to my YouTube channel and you see my my cooking shows, you'll see how much fun we have. <laughs> uh, no, you're good. You're good. Um, I'm here for you, sweetie. You know, I'm just uh, I'm just sitting here. Coming up with stuff. Boy, I can't wait. <laughs> no, you're, you're good. Um, like I said, I'm here to, to hear you. But, um, yeah, no, I, I can't wait till uh, next week so we can actually talk. Like I said, I'm on, on, on at midnight. So, um, I'll start talking about myself and like I usually do, and then uh, you you can chime in, call in. So I, so I search on YouTube. Yeah, you could Google uh, you could Google my uh, channel or uh, uh, subscribe. Yeah, please subscribe. A lot of people don't. Like, that's the thing. I get I get some views. I'm not really up the, into the big thing because the way the YouTube thing works, you have to know how YouTube works. Um, I just load up my channels and people say you have to do this tagging and all this and all that in order to get views. I don't know how to do any of that. So TVB, no, that's TVB and TV, but you had it right in the, in the beginning here. You know what? I'll do this. Maybe can you do, let me see if I can, uh, I could do one of these. Hold on. Dun, 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 dun. And do 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 switch channel TVB and TV. I hope nothing comes on. Hold on, my channel. Yep. Sorry about that. That's every time you hit my channel, that's what happens. So I'll go over here, copy that. Go over here. No, actually, I'll put you over this one because this is the one that has all of them. Look at me, I'm talking to myself. Hold on, copy. Back over here. And then paste. See if that happens. And you, well, I guess you can't click on that. Well, that's the link. I mean, if you could copy, can you copy and paste? Yeah, you can copy and paste that. That's the link. So, uh, yeah, not you're not able to click on that. 
But yeah, well, that's what I, I make people laugh. I try, you know, um, I try to act stupid like a dumb ass, or, you know, on my Facebook even. Um, if you go on my Facebook, you'll see, uh, you'll see uh, me come up with some stupid posts. I've been coming up with some other type of posts, like political posts, because I'm getting irritated about all the BS that's going around. Everybody's just making things harder for everybody. Yeah, here I'll put my I'll put my name on there, so you uh, this is my full name, so you can find me on Facebook. If you type if you type my full name in or my name like that, um, I'm the guy, the handsome guy with the bass bass guitar on there. Um, I'm a musician. Well, want to be a musician, but yeah, I have a band. I have a cover band, uh, a classic classic rock cover band, and. Um, So, uh, but anyway, um, profit to the nation, Miller, Autumn Miller, and to studio. Hey, how you doing, sir? Um, actually, I'm about to sign off, but if you want to uh, want to talk, hi, how are you? Oh, you're are you a girl? I'm sorry, I thought you were a guy. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> I like I was telling uh, Jill there. Um, I don't have my glasses on, so it's very hard for me to uh, to see the text messages. No, it's not a picture of me and my wife. It's a picture of me uh, uh, on playing the bass. It should be the first one that pops up. Um, it should be like a like a reddish picture. I have long hair and uh Yeah, I'm I'm a musician. I do uh I I do a couple podcasts, cooking show on YouTube and all that stuff. I just uh I thought you were calling me a hoe. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I, I don't want to go there. Oh, your family's musicians, yeah. Uh, I got to, I got to. No, you're good, you're good. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm all about. Look, I'm a depre. I, I, I suffer from depression, but. I like to laugh. I love to laugh. So that 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 made my day. <laughs> okay, you sent me a friend request. All right, I accept it now. I got my phone right here. Um, <laughs> I'm like somebody else calling me a hole. <laughs> we all sing drums, keyboard. Oh, you know what? I needed a keyboard player. Where are you from? Where you at? DMV. What is what's DMV? I'm sorry. To me, DMV says the Department of Motor Vehicles. <laughs> oh, DC. Okay, okay. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff going on up there in the DC area. Um, uh, my aunt lives in Virginia. Um, I don't know what part of Virginia, but yeah, she's in Virginia. So uh, I'm sorry. What was your name? Miller? Autumn. Okay, so your name is Autumn. I got you. Ugh, sorry, my bad. I got my my niece's name is Autumn. So you suffer from depression? I'm sorry, Jill. I'm, I didn't forget about you. you. I'm still there with you. I'm just trying to catch up on everything here. But if if you know, like I said, I, I'll I'll uh, accept your uh, your request. 
I forgot to do it. I'm sorry. Let's see here. And uh, you can chat with me there too. I mean, but like I said, don't anything that you see on my Facebook, and I tell this to everybody, and it's on my, uh, it's actually on my on my page. Um, don't take any, most of the stuff that I say is stupidity. Only when I get serious, it's when, um, uh, um, but that's, that's, you'll see the difference, you know, cause I like to act stupid. <clears throat> it makes me laugh. I laugh. I laugh for myself. <laughs> Thyroid issues. Yeah. Mine is health issues. I had a massive heart attack, like five, 2016. Um, that's, yeah, that's going on five years. Wow. Um, to be honest, I didn't, uh, didn't know I was going to last this long, <laughs> but five years went really, really quick. But yeah, I, I've been suffering from depression for five years now. Um, ever since my, uh, my heart attack, but mine comes and goes and I self-medicate. So I'm glad military. No, actually, uh, I wish I was, but I'm too much of a coward. Um, I'm a big guy. I'm a, I handle myself, you know what I mean? But when it comes to guns, oh, you know, I'm so scared and it's, it's weird how I am. You know what I mean? I, I suffer from depression. I, I, I have thoughts of suicide and I'm afraid of dying, you know, and, and me going to like the military, being around guns and this and that. I say, I'd be like one, I'd be the one probably shoot, get shot. So, uh, no, I'm not military, but, uh, I do, uh, support our military and I thank every veteran that I meet because I know I can't do it and they did it. So they're more, uh, if you say manlier than me, either men or women, <laughs> because I'd be <laughs> on a gun battle. If there was a gun battle, I'd probably like crawl up in a fetal position and cry for mommy. I watch uh, these war movies and all the stuff these guys had to go through. Oh my God, man. Especially D Day over there at Normandy. Good Lord. I mean, they, they they try to make a movie out of it. And I bet that movie that movie was so intense that it's probably not even close to even being at being there. You know, so uh yeah, and I I watched that Band of Brothers for uh Marathon. That was pretty good. Um just it's just amazing because I have a 20 year old son and I look at that, I look at what they what they what they went through being his age you know my son's a baby in my opinion you know he's 20 years old yes but um to me he's a baby and to think children were out there in war you know oh well must go through their head especially if you survived you know everything that you've seen you want to talk about depression and all that other stuff? Go through that, you know. But that's why that's why I respect everybody that went to the military because I couldn't do it. Now, looking back, would I do it now if I was to repeat everything all over again? Probably not, because if I would have went to the military, it probably would have changed the course of my life. And I wouldn't wind up meeting my wife. And that would not have been good. Um, so everything that I everything that I ever I ever done, you know, I have no regrets because it led me to meet my wife. As as the podcast, I mean, I kind of explained uh not how we met, but how long we've been in the beginning, but um in later episodes. I'll start explaining how we met and how everything was. 
I regret not going to the military. Yeah, well, me too. But like I said, if if I would have went, it, it wouldn't have it wouldn't have brought me here. It wouldn't have brought me to this part of my life. And for twenty four years, we've been together, and I've been really happy with her. Um, like I said, we've had our ups and downs, like any other couple, but we uh, we seem to get through everything. But uh, yeah, I would have if 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 I didn't want didn't wind up want if I could still wind up in this lifetime in in this life that I have now. Yes, I would. I would have gone to the military and uh, and served because I think it's uh, it's a good thing. You know what I mean? It's a good thing to do to be an American um, to support. Uh, my phone's going off. People chatting on the WhatsApp. <laughs> I got people that are friends. They just they just don't sleep. That's why I shut my phone off at night. You in the police academy? I'm skiing. Yeah, I'm skating on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. We went uh, skating yesterday, last night. Um, I could only go like two two laps, and then I'm done. I gotta sit down. <laughs> Because, you know, it's like having a bad heart. It take, everything takes out, a lot out of you. It's weird. Like, I could go take a mile and a half bike ride, and I'd be okay. But I bend over to tie my shoes, and I get up. And it feels like I just ran a mile. It's weird. It's weird. But Yeah, if Jill, if you see all the political stuff on there, I mean, it's just me talking because I'm not happy about, you know, what they're doing. You know, it doesn't matter if, 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 all right, let me just say this real quick. So that way everybody understands where I'm coming from. It's not the point that they're, they're impeaching the president. Okay. It's the point that they're impeaching him for the reason is so they don't, they don't want him running again. Now, my, my main bitch about that is who are they to tell us who we can vote for or not to me pulling pulling that kind of stunt is voter suppression because if the man gets voted again in four years why are you stopping it if the that's what the people want i thought the whole thing was what the people want but what i'm saying is you can't even though if it was a republic or a democratic president i still think it's wrong you know what i mean because i don't think one person or one party should decide who we need to vote for but i don't want to get political here but I just want to explain to you what, if you see, because a lot of, I have a lot of friends on, on Facebook and the reason I have a lot of friends, cause they like my stupid posts, you know, they'll, they'll get up in the morning and they're like, they, they love reading what, what kind of stupid thing I'm going to put up in the morning. And, um, I don't really like getting political because I, it, it's not me. You know, I, I pay attention, but it's not me. I'm a, I'm a president supporter, no matter if it's a Republican or a Democrat, you know what I mean? I'm one of those guys that uh, that I support my pilot of my plane. I don't want the pilot of my plane to crash. Even though I'm a Republican, do I want uh, Biden to do good? Of course I want him to do good. I don't want him to destroy the country. You know what I mean? Am I going to support him? Of course I am. If, am I going to like every? I'm, you're not going to like everything your president does. You know what I mean? If you like, if you like everything your president does, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> Because you can't agree with somebody a hundred of time, a hundred of the hundred percent of the time. You know what I mean? It just makes you into a follower. You know, um, I'm a Republican. I didn't like Bush. You know, so it's it go. I'm a realist. You know, I believe in family values. I believe you know in the family core thing, and I believe that God should be in everything. Even though I'm not a believer, I still believe that people should have that. You know, be able to have that you know, be able to have that kind of, you know, kind of reinforcement, you know, um, and that's why, you know, I believe everybody should be free to do anything they want to do, basically, you know, and so whatever happens behind my closed doors in my own house, there's nobody else's business but mine, you know what I mean? If I want to walk around naked and do freaky things to myself as I'm cooking bacon naked, that's my business. There's no reason anybody else should know, you know, be bothering me about it. You know, it's my thing. But 
like I said, uh, this ain't for for a political thing. This is for you know depressed people, for depressed people. If I want to get political, I'll start another podcast. <laughs> Because I have, to be honest with you, I have a lot to say about that. But, you know, we'll see. All right, ladies. Um, Jill, Autumn, it's been my pleasure to be chatting with you. Um, for the people on a YouTube channel, if you're listening to this on YouTube, I apologize about the, you know, it was nice to meet you too. Um I'm kind of reading and can't, you know, do the thing because I can't see. So I don't know if you can go back to these to this uh, to this page and look at the text. But I hope uh, you ladies uh, call up uh, next week, next next Wednesday. Um, I like to hear Jill. I love love to hear your story. Um, and then Autumn could chime in or call in. I don't know how. I think you could fit multiple people, multiple people on this thing. So, you know, we could all have a little chat, you know, get to know each other and maybe help each other out. Um, we had uh, Marty last week. Uh, he called in and he has he that guy hit it, hit and he hit the ball right out of the park. First show, he had a great story, great storyteller. He he was on the money. Um, he said he might be able to call, the, to, but you know, people, you know, change their mind and do that. But I like to promote this podcast before I go. It's Black and White. Um, the Black and White Podcast. Um, real nice guy. Um, depression and silence in the Black community. Um, Yes and no. I mean, I have a whole big thing about that too. You know what I mean? The the problem is uh it's not that they don't black people don't talk about that stuff, is not all of them are like that. You know what I mean? There is um a lot of it depends how you're raised, you know what I mean? Some of you some of us have been raised as like uh we were, you were taught to go to church and pray. Yeah. I mean, trust me, praying helps too. I mean, praying helps too because you're, 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 you're expressing yourself to somebody else. Um, I don't pray. I don't do any of that stuff. Um, like I said, to me, in my head, it's kind of hard to, to comprehend the thought of a heaven or hell or a God or angels or anything. I mean, would it be great if I, once I die, I go see my mom? Oh, absolutely. Oh, that would be the best thing that, that could ever happen to me. But in my realization in my own mind is I tell people this, have you, have you ever slept without dreaming? And they say, yes. I was like, well, that's, that to me is death. Basically you're asleep and you're not dreaming. You know, it, there's nothing there. Um, like I said, it depends and depends how you're raised. Like, um, the black community is more like the Spanish community. I'm Span, I'm Spanish, so I know how, and I was raised Spanish. We don't talk about our problems. <coughs> we, uh, we handle ourselves. You, we man up. That's what we do. We, uh, we're a lot different than, um, than per se white people. Um, my wife is white. Um, if you want to say what kind of lifestyle we did, we live the normal style. I mean, we live in, in, I don't want to say normal, I'm not insulting anybody. Um, we live in a, in a neighborhood, you know, it's, it's diverse. Um, and we've been here for a very long time. And, uh, um, that's the way I like it. You know what I mean? I don't like an all race, uh, neighborhoods. I, I, like I lived 
and all, when I first got down here, um, I, I didn't know the the towns, and I found this cheap house, a, a house to rent, and uh, the place was called Pine Hills. And I was like, wow, Pine Hills, that seems kind of nice. You know what I mean? Like Beverly Hills, Pine Hills, you know? So you figure it was nice. No, it's a basically the uh, the uh, ghetto. I don't want to say ghetto, but it's it's in there, in that section. Uh, and before I left, they, they broke into my house and like stole everything, including my pit bull. <laughs> but yeah, I moved out of there and but like I said, I, I live, uh, I wouldn't live in a totally white neighborhood either because it's, I don't like, I like the diversity. I like the, uh, the different cultures and different, you know, you know, some people, uh, some people, uh, you know, make big call me. I'm a racist because I'm an all lives matter kind of thing, kind of guy. I'm not, you know, into all that other stuff because I don't believe. Do I believe this racism in this country? Absolutely. Okay. But is it a major problem in this country? No, it's not. We have 330 million people uh, in this country. Less than 1% is uh, racist. You know what I mean? It's not the majority of us. And the, the, the media makes it seem like all of us, we're all racist. No, we're not. You know, but it's just a media thing. It's what the, and, and the thing that's sick about it is like people believe all that stuff that they hear, you know, they don't, they don't research stuff, you know, they don't, they, they just, you know, like today, for instance, oh man, I was, I got so mad. I hate when, when the news puts a uh, black man gets killed by a white guy or, it's, or that, you know, they always put a race on there. And and when it comes to a black guy, it, it always gets, starts off with black man. And I always get mad because why does it have to be that? Why you have to put in race in front of the guy of the guy that died or whatever? Like today, for instance, it says uh South African man gets uh, arrested for uh, breaking curfew for getting formula for his uh newborn which kind of it's kind of messed up yes but the way they made it sound like it happened here so now you got people blowing up on facebook because they don't research anything so they're blowing up on that thing and not even reading that it didn't even happen here it happened in south africa <laughs> i'm like why would you put that on there why would you it was fox news too i was like why would you start that Re just saying that people don't look at, don't research the rest of it. So now you get you get a a, a, a young black guy thinking they're at us again. You know what I mean? And to, and to be honest with you, and they wouldn't when they when they say South Africa, they wouldn't realize that most people in South Africa are white. <laughs> it was probably a white guy, but he was South African. They got you know, but they made it sound like he was a black guy, and that's how everything stirs up. You know, because then you get all these kids. I'm not saying that they're, 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 they're ignorant. They're just not informed right. You know what I mean? And then it just comes into like, you, 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 it's just, okay, they're after us again. You know what I mean? It's like LeBron James. I think he's the worst, the worst person in the world, the, the what he tweets, you know, instead of helping out kids, you know, especially black kids saying, you know, Let's not riot. Let's not let let's let's be, you know, civil headed about this, this and that. He comes up with all this stuff that entices people to to get mad, you know, to protest and get angry. No, there there's no cops aren't getting up in the morning and say, I'm gonna kill me a black person today. It doesn't work that way. You know what I mean? The statistics of the cops, cops kill a thousand people a year. Okay. Not kill, I don't want to say kill, but you know, basically, yeah, shoot, kill, you know, a year. And the percentages is like, but they make it sound like you know, one race is more more successful to getting killed than another. No, it's not. It's it's the way you perceive you perceive yourself, you know what I mean? If you if you're gonna act all hood like and you know, say be like fuck the police type of guy, 
of course they're going to mess with you, you know? I mean, I've been on both sides. I've, I've always respected police officers. And every time I got arrested, it was a very good experience for me and for him, okay? Because I did what I said and put my hands behind my back, got arrested. I got arrested a few times for driving without a license in Florida. But when, but when you go into, into jail, those COs, they don't care. They don't care if you jaywalked or you just molested somebody. You know what I mean? They still treat you like shit. You know, but no, cops, cops are there to do, I'm, like I said, we have 800,000 cops in this country. Okay. Less than 1% is bad. It's, it's not all of them. You know, you can't blame all the cops for everything that happens. And the media just puts, it just finds these, these videos and just put it on there. And then, and then we'll go on there. I mean, shit, all the stuff that happened last year with all these people and, you know, and the riots and the burning down of businesses and people getting hurt and killed, it's that shouldn't have happened, you know, and nobody was there to stop it. You know, everybody just let everything happen and, you know, and it, and it put a bad name on everything. Then all of a sudden is this racism thing comes up, you know, everybody's, you know, anything you say, Oh, that's racist. Oh, that's racist. They, they say racist so much that, they take the real meaning what racism is. Racism is a very bad thing. You know what I mean? And you're never going to stop it. There's always going to be some asshole that's going to be a racist and it's going to raise his kid to be a racist. So you're never going to stop that. Do we know, we, are we going to have to learn to live with it? Yes. Okay. We, we're going to have to start by, by uh, learning to live with it is ignoring these people. You know what I mean? You give them, you give them more, you give them more, uh, more, more news or whatever. You know, the better they, you know, the, the bigger they are. If you just let let them be them and let's go on in our in our little merry way, you know, we'd be we'd be we'd be better. The the, the news makes everything bad because that's how they sell stuff. Clicks or you know, back in my days, that's how they sell newspapers. You know, but that's how they sell views. That's how they sell advertisement. Because the more dramatic you make you make it sound, the more hits you're going to get, the more money you're going to make. That's why I don't even, when I listen to the news, I listen to the news and I do my research. Because <laughs> you can't even believe what they say. The only thing you can believe what they say is when you're the, you're, uh, the, the weather guy. The weather guy is always on the money. <laughs> Other than that, everybody else is full of shit. Uh, all right, ladies. I'm sorry for keeping you up this late. Uh, like I said, I didn't want to get political, but I, when I get into that spectrum, I can't shut up. This is supposed to be something else. But yeah, we, uh, um, I, Autumn, I don't know if you can see uh, my the, the 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 messages before you showed up. I'm gonna put my name down again. It hit me up on Facebook. Like I said, I don't, I don't know if you're getting everything. So that'd be my name on Facebook. And then this is my YouTube channel. Oh, you know what? Uh, TV. That's the name of the YouTube channel. And I'll paste the link. You can copy and paste that. I'll get you right on my page. Oh, I'm I'm glad it helped out. I'm glad I helped you out because uh, this is what it's all about, you know. It's about helping me out and helping other people out. But you know, I wish I could do this every night. But <laughs> I'm one of those guys that I go to bed at nine, I get up at three because my mind just wakes up and I can't get I can't go back to sleep. But um, yeah. So uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll set a date uh, for next Wednesday. And then, uh, hit, like I said, hit me up on Facebook if you guys want to talk. If you, um, now that we're, you know, together, on, you know, you're, we're Facebook friends. If I, I understand the depression is hard. If you need to talk, message me. Okay. I'm, I'm there. I'm all, I'm always there. You know, if, if there's something, you know, something bothering you and, you know, you just need somebody to talk to or make you laugh, message me. I'll make, uh, I'll, 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 uh, 
I'm there for, for people. I own, you know, my, my life is an open book. So, uh, um, to me, I think I'm here for a reason. Um, I didn't die that day because I think I was spared to help other people out. That's the way I see it. You know what I mean? Um, before I go to cry now. See, this is this the problem that I have. I'm I'm a very emotional guy. I'm a very I'm one of those tough biker kind of guys, but my emotions just they're the worst thing. I I consider like uh, falling, down, you know, crying into uh, like a uh, a sign of weakness. I know everybody's gonna say it's not, but to me, it, it always has. Um, half of my mom and half of my dad. My mom was like the sweetest person. She cried for everything. My dad was like, we strong, this, that, blah, but I'm the mix of both of them. And, uh, Jeremiah Toy. <laughs> that me? Okay. But, um, yeah, so, uh, I get, once I started talking about my life on this, which would be, I don't know, one of these days. <laughs> Because I get sidetracked, which is good, because I want to get sidetracked. You know what I mean? I don't want this to be, I like it that you guys are on there. This is this is what it's all about, because I wanted to start talking about myself. And then, you know, if somebody chimes in, I'll start with them. You know, so this is good. I like, well, in the beginning, because I was, in the beginning, before Jill got on there, I was like, well, I'm here by myself. <laughs> And uh, the first half hour, or so you know, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys uh, popped in before uh, before I signed out. But uh, anyway, uh, hold on. I have a purpose. Yeah, well, like I said, I I hope this purpose is to help people out. You know what I mean? I like helping people out. I like helping young people out. The thing is with the, the, the young people is. Um, as you all know, I mean, I'm 53. I was a total idiot in my teens. I was a total idiot in my twenties. I was a total idiot in my thirties. <laughs> so I know how it is to, uh, to, uh, um, damn, I just lost track. I read that, uh, that Jill is old. You're only 50 years old, you said, right? Or you're turning 50. <laughs> but yeah, I have I have this issue. I have, uh, like I said, you guys don't know me well, but I have ADHD. Young people really go through. That's what I was talking, young people. I got ADHD, so if I'm talking and then I turn around, I look at something and try to read it, I just forgot what I was talking about. Yeah, but young people. Um, helping out young people. So... When you're young, you always think you know everything. Like I got a 14 year old daughter that thinks she knows the world, and uh, I know we we were all that way. But it's always nice to have somebody there for you that is older and been through everything, so it can guide you the way. But the problem is that as young as we are, we have this ego that you're old. I know what I'm doing, you know. And then to you realize you're old and oh, this is what you're doing. <laughs> oh, you know what? I thought about that too. Why not be born old and become a baby? Oh, God. Oh, just, uh, well, you guys, you, if, if you guys become fans and come in every Wednesday, you'll know my life. And, uh, You'll know that. I had a very interesting life. Very odd and interesting life, but all right. But I don't want to get into it now because then it'll lead up to another hour. I'm trying to lead my son who's 19. Yeah, my son, I have a 20-year-old. He's gonna turn 21. He just moved out of the house um last uh in March. So but the way it was when he was 18. He was all ready to move out. He's like, this and that. And I'm like, look, let me explain something to you. You don't have any money to move anywhere. So where are you going to go? So I, I told him, I said, I'll make you a plan. You stay here. You work. You go to school. And you save up your money. 
once you're 21, he goes, 21. I said, yeah, once you're 21, you'll have 10 grand in your pot in your bank account, and then you'll be able to start your life. Last year on Father's Day, he whipped out his bank book, his bank account, and uh showed me that he had a little bit over ten thousand dollars in the bank. He's turning 21 in February in February next month. I'm very proud of him. He's came a long way. He saved his money. He paid for his own college. He pays for his own bills. And now he's a great young man, ready to rule the world. You know, he works uh, for Chick-fil-A for, uh, for, uh, with my wife. They're both managers there. Um, they're sending him to Canada to open up a Chick-fil-A. He went to uh, Los Angeles to open one up there. So, yeah, he's he's been more places in 20 years than me and my wife in the you know, whole life. <laughs> so I'm very excited about him. He's just got he just came back from a skiing trip. First ski, first time he's seen snow. Um, yeah, he's doing real good. I'm very proud of him. But, he, you know, it, he's like one of those kids. He's a millennial, of course, you know, but he's one of those kids that he went to, he went to school, okay? He, oh, he, was go, he wanted to go to college, and he got turned down for financial aid, okay? Any other kid that went through what my son went through would have said, you know what? Fuck it, then I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? If they can't help me, I'm not going to do it. You know what he said? Fuck it. If they're not going to help me out, I'm going to pay for it. So he paid for it himself. You know what I mean? He took care of it. Now he went to the uh, he, the, the the college he went to was a community college. He went through that. He owes nothing. And now he's on in UCF and university, you know, and he's got his loans and he's paying them off and he's doing great. But he wasn't like, like I said, he wasn't like any other kid would be, you know what I mean? And just like say, screw it. I'm going to, I'm not going to do it. He he took account of what happened and, and he's doing it. He fought for what he does and he's going to be, do something about it, you know? And that's, that's what parenting is all about. You know what I mean? We have to make our kids do that because we don't want them to suffer the way we did or, you know, if you suffered or not, somebody else came in. forsaken heart yeah you guys have uh i can't see hi good morning forsaken heart i think that's what it says right yeah forsaken heart yeah i don't have my glasses so um but yeah no he's uh doing good um i got like i said i got a 14 year old that i'm trying to oh god it's so hard to raise children nowadays especially teenagers especially when they have these phones God, the phone thing is like the end of society, in my opinion. So, but we'll we'll get we'll I'll get there with her. Are uh, you saying your son is a my son is a football player? Unfortunately, we had no season, and it was bad for him. Oh, that's yeah, I know. It's the worst. Especially, you know, what is your is your son uh, a senior in high school or? Oh, okay, yeah, that's the worst too. Especially when you can't play, and then you know, you can't, uh, um, you can't, uh, you can't show off your skills to get a, a scholarship. Oh wow, I could click on your faces and actually see your faces. Hi, hi, Jill, how you doing? Yeah, pretty lady. Let's see what I'm here. Yeah, you're a pretty lady too. I like the glasses. Can't see that well, but yeah. But all right, ladies. Well, we'll end it now. And then uh like I said, uh I hope you guys uh come in next week. Um it'd be great to talk to you guys and get to know your story. And see if uh, anybody else has theirs. And they could chime in. But I uh, thank you very much for uh, being there for, with us, with me. 
I guess us because we're together. And uh, we'll uh, see each other uh, or hear each other uh, next Wednesday. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much. You guys have a great week. And I hope you're, I hope the best for everybody. You know, it's hard to, you know, to, uh, to say it's not going to happen. But like I said, you guys need any help. Hit me up. I'm there for you. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Love you and uh, good night.